thought I'd do a print based on uh, some old plates that didn't work out. I thought I'd do a dry point to start out with because that's a pretty easy direct process to use. The only trouble with dry point when you're working direct on the plate is that everything comes out backward. So when you're doing your drawing, you're not really sure it's going to work unless you use things like mirrors to look at it or transfer a pencil drawing on transfer paper and then carbon paper and all that kind of nonsense. But I've always believed in working direct on the plate. I've always believed that the plate metal itself or wood or whatever it is you're using has something to say, has a voice in your work. And I was thinking about a friend of mine who is a musician, Mark is a musician, and uh, I think he'd probably agree with me that when you're writing a song, you work with what's around you. You don't necessarily go by uh, lyrics that are all ready finished you you kind of work with what's in your mind or what's around you and that's kind of how it is when I'm starting this plate I'm just working with what's in my tray of partly cut plates and partly worked over plates and kind of like recycling industrial material and I think about a lot of songs are written that way where you're kind of recycling material that came out of industry or personal experience or something. You work with with something else that's sort of partly used or already started. These are old plates that started a long time ago and never finished. It might have been experiments. It might have been something I was teaching or something. They're copper, 22 gauge, and I'm going over them with what looks like double aught steel wool and then I'm going to polish it. It's polished like a mirror. But the other one, I didn't polish at all. I just left the tooth of the steel wool on it kind of foggy and uh, I just got the idea that maybe I'll just make a two plate print and I'll start by drawing an outline around this other plate that's what I mean when you when you're composing and you're writing and you're trying to create a new thing it's like writing a song could be where you uh, you work with what's right in front of you and you you change your mind if you're taking a walk for example thinking about a song and you're walking a path you've always walked it's very familiar something might take hold of you and you might say well I'm going to take a different route Let's, on an impulse go somewhere else it might be like that when you when you write a song when you write music I'm not a musician but I can identify with musicians. The creative process is probably the same for any kind of art. This is dry point. I'm just scratching on the plate. Not putting a lot of pressure on it. If I put too much pressure on it, I'd probably break this needle. This needle is called a Whistler style etching needle. It's a real popular dry point needle. You keep it sharp on a sharpening stone makes a nice little line. Of course you don't know what kind of line it is till you put some ink in it and wipe it off. But I can wait. I can wait. I like the surprise. If I wait a while I don't know while I'm working what kind of a line it might be making. Now on impulse again come up in here and just make some random lines. I don't have anything in mind except the feel right now.
now I'm getting curious as to how this is going to look. So I think I will stop and get some ink and uh, work it in and see what kind of lines I'm getting. I have some leftover ink from a little gig I had last Saturday. I'll just use some of that. It's an oil-based etching ink mixture of black and brown. Work that into those dry point lines. Thin coat. And uh, it's typical then after you've got the lines filled to wipe it back off. Now, there's a lot of ways you can wipe it back off. Here's one way with a piece of telephone book paper. Go gentle on it so you've got a true idea of what's, what you have down. And those lines are very faint, but it's a start. The thing about dry point they li like to say about dry point is that it's got a real softness about it, a soft line. Well, that's because there's never really much of a groove for the ink to sit in, not like an etching. Etchings have pretty deep, sharp lines. Dry points, it's just a burr, actually. It's just a little metal burr that's been thrown up like like a plow having gone through a field. And it's that burr that catches the ink. So it makes a soft line. It's pretty, but it doesn't last long. So far, I don't have much going. If I start bearing down on the needle harder, and again, rub some ink into it, and rub it off again, you can see what a difference it's going to make. If I decide that that's just too light, faint, plus it won't stand up for very many prints, when I say very many, I think, you know, from this plate I could probably get about six before it began to flatten out. You couldn't see much. But you can dig down as deep as your tool will allow. And get it to be pretty dark. And this is the way I like to work with dry point when I'm just improvising on the plate. I suppose it's a little bit like that music too. I'm just sort of improvising and kind of trying out different melodies, different times, different arrangements. You come up with different results. Now let's see how that outside one works. Put a little ink in there. Now this is the back of an old plate that got accidentally etched. So there's already the beginnings of an image there. Like I said, it's sometimes better to go with what you have found laying around than it is to start with a brand new store-bought plate. Whole hum, not very interesting. Whereas when you start with something that's a little beat up, a little overused, maybe not even intended to be what an art material is supposed to be. So that's going to be a kind of a frame. I might go with two colors down the road, but again, I don't know. I don't have a clear idea as to what I'm doing. I don't like to work that way. I like to work with, like, I'm, like I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, I've been doing that wiping with paper telephone book pages and I've got them both inked up and wiped. Clean off the edges a little bit. And I've got my press set up. Not actually my press. This press is going to a man named Peter in California, I believe. I've got some paper. I soaked this paper for 15 or 20 minutes 
and get the excess water off of it. The paper is called uh, Magnani, gray paper. I want to print the background plate first. Pressure's on. Always use two hands when you check your pressure and tighten your pressure. You can feel it change when you're going through. That'll be the first time through. That'll be what I call the background plate. Now I have squeezed out some of the moisture from the squeezed out some of the moisture from the paper, so this second proof is not going to have the benefit of such soft paper, but it'll be all right, I think. And I'm just going to try to eyeball it, figure out about where it lands. Just to be sure I got a good impression, I'm going to go over it twice. This isn't necessarily good because it's going to wear out that dry point. The more times you run it through, the more it flattens out the burr. Always write a moment number on your print. You want to play proxy mates. It's 4 o'clock Pacific Daylight Time, so that makes it 1600. The year is 11, the month is 11. And the day is uh, 3, November 3rd, 1600. Now I can pull the proof. Now I've got both colors. Of course, I use the same brown, so can't really tell which plate is which, but it's all an exercise. It's all a matter of improvising and feeling it out. After a while, you might get an idea and start pushing it this way or that, but get the quality of the dry point.